Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video, which is to be a classical horror story, in that it begins with a spirit of adventure, hope, and boldly dashing forward in experimentation, and then ends in utter demise as affairs plunge into darkness. In the beginning, our story is taking us to Chemex Tool. That is a shop on Amazon.com where you can acquire a lot of the gadgetry and machines that you otherwise would be perhaps purchasing on Asian stores. But if you have grown fond of trusting Amazon's logistics and procedures, then perhaps you, as many others, might prefer to get your stuff from a shop on Amazon. And Chemex Tool certainly had the distinction that in the past they were offering many parts which simply other shops were not offering at all. So that is certainly a shop I became quite fond of as I could find their things which I otherwise would have had to order from China myself. And Chemex Tool is also a place that is offering or intending to offer the Pocket 386 machine, which is a type of modern retro computer in the style of the book 8088 that is a modern made laptop but with ancient characteristics. This one, this transparent model, is running Windows for Work Groups 3.11 and it is featuring 8 megabytes of RAM, a 386 processor, a 2 gigabyte compact flash hard drive, and so on and so forth. It's a newer generation of what previously was, for instance, known as the book 8088 but with a more modern processor, a little bit more RAM, and so on and so forth, but still with the complete retro feeling in a modern encasing. And there was a gentleman in Chemex Tool, a certain Chris, who had with me in the past quite some exchanges on the issues of the book 8088, which I experienced and which I have documented in other videos. And here, I must emphasize, he acted with great personal integrity in that he invited me to receive a sample of the book, uh, of the Pocket 386 and give it a neutral and thorough review and test. So that whatever shortcomings I identify, he may then communicate to his supplier and to make sure that these are ironed out. I must say this is certainly a stance very much to the benefit of his customers, right? Because many others just don't care at all and <laughs> they're not interested in identifying issues. They are just interested in somehow placing their stuff. And so I have to emphasize, despite what now you are about to see, certainly the role of ChemX tool, and this has been a very positive one, as here genuine interest has been shown to act to the advantage of the customer. It was indeed so that he never asked me to give a favorable review, but he simply wanted that it is a neutral one and that he may you know, make use of it for the improvement of the product and its distribution, something I certainly thoroughly respect. And I would like, therefore, also to stress at the beginning that this video concerns the product and not my experience with Chemex tool, which in this adventure has been entirely positive. And in fact, Chris did not even shirk back when I told him <laughs> what you are about to see now. And with this introduction, ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to the horrors that lie ahead. 
A well-packaged box, ladies and gentlemen, where you are seeing right now the bottom part, because on the top part there is my address. And I really hope it is what I think it might be. It is indeed. A box. <laughs> okay, okay. We are in, in box in a box territory, but I may tell you that the box is very elegant. I like the box. I'm going to keep the box. So this is excellently packaged and what we have inside and what we have inside. Oh, ho! this is so beautiful. We are having here already the user guide conveniently put in the front so idiot safe you know and we're having one box and another little box and a big box on the base let me show you that from a somewhat higher perspective now what is in the black box white boxes and the big one the machine proper was contained and the small one, there was the charger, and the middle one was used to house the periphery or accessoires, which is definitely a departure in design philosophy that I shall get into in a moment a bit more. All the parts were nicely packaged in little baggies. The screen had a screen protector. So everything was packaged in such a way that proper arrival is certainly the expected outcome, right? The sexy machine itself, of course, is this friend here, which looks like a right out of a retro science fiction. I love it. The design is simply amazing. <laughs> it is very compact. And as you can see, already it has a different philosophy concerning the connectors that I shall mention in a bit more in more detail. So that it looks like when you open it. I have removed already the screen protector so this is why you see the nice matte screen. And of course the thing of interest when we are later trying it out is that when you press this button you should be able to use a mouse over the arrow keys moving the mouse and here to click the mouse so let's see later on whether that is working as i think it should be working and perhaps the first thing which one is noticing is wait a minute <laughs> isn't this smaller isn't it smaller than the book 8088 and i tell you it is but not at the expense of the screen this is actually quite interesting so this is a classical book 8088 version 2 and if you put them one above the other, then what do we see? Here quite some margin of difference, right? The new machine is more compact, but the old machine simply had more space around the screen proper. And if you were to, you know, place them in such a fashion that you can align the screens, you can see that really the screens are of the same size. It's just so that the newer one is not marked by such distances, right? Because the old one is having quite some distances. The new machine is having its sound output on the body of the laptop, whereas the old one had it integrated into the screen bezel. So that is certainly a hardware change. And about the design philosophy, you see here such internal motherboard leadouts. This is really like in a desktop computer where you can connect some sort of cards. The previous one instead had one such leadout, but also an integrated parallel port and an integrated serial port. The new approach in comparison has some advantages and disadvantages, of course. So if you look at the two things, that's what it looks like. 
The disadvantage is, of course, that you need to fiddle a bit more before you can attach a serial port and a parallel port. The advantage, though, is that you might not want these sports in particular. You want, might want to connect some card in order to control ancient machinery. Maybe you want to connect some other serial card and whatnot. And with the new one, you can do that. Which one you prefer as an approach is really a question of taste, but both has its advantages and disadvantages. So this is the machine itself, the machine proper. Uh, let's look a little bit perhaps at the accessoires. What are we having here? Most interesting, I certainly find this part, which is giving you keyboard and mouse, as well as VGA for the screen. So connecting this to your Pocket 386 should actually make it possible to use it like some sort of workstation of the early 1990s, where you can attach a big keyboard, a big mouse and a big monitor. Like, not bad, not bad at all. They're also packaging a parallel port. I admit this is not of main interesting interest to me, but certainly useful for people who are having older printers. So if you're having an older printer with a parallel port, that's exactly the thing you will be needing for your little 90s workstation. And the thing I love is, of course, the serial port. My beloved serial port is included and will make it possible to connect, you know, to modems, the internet and the like, if one were so inclined. And now let me just get briefly into a topic which for one reason or another seems to be difficult for younger generations. And that is the difference between a serial port for the modem and a VGA port for the monitor. Do you see how rather different they are, right? Like <laughs> serial port is having way fewer pins and is by default here male, whereas the VGA port is by default female with a lot more connection possibilities. So if you want to buy a monitor cable, don't get a serial cable, right? Like this is a mistake which is apparently still happening and I hope to contribute to weed it out thereby. As to the electricity. <laughs> so this is the charger which comes with the machine. Comparing it to the charger of a previous Book 8088, you can see that it is a little bit more compact too. It's just a little less broad, a little smaller in general. Mine did not come with the European connector, but they seem to be exactly compatible. And moreover, they seem to be also electrically compatible at 12 volt and one and a half ampere. So yeah, might as well use the previous one or just give this one the European connection. So that is what concerns the hardware. And now let's have just a brief look at the documentation. So you're getting here <laughs> two things, right? The pay attention, these are common problems, things and the proper user guide. The pay attention about common problems, things is mentioning that your real time clock in, and your BIOS settings, including the mouse settings, are really dependent on the, on the battery. So in other words, the battery may get slowly discharged and at some point you will lose your mouse settings. Regarding the date, I want to give you a little hint. If you subtract from the year 28 years, then you're going to have a complete a repetition in the calendar. Like today's date and weekday is completely in sync with today's date and weekday 28 years ago. So yes, you can set your date at some time in the late 1990s and have a proper following of when is Monday, when is Friday and whatnot. <laughs> Just a little hint for the retro lovers who want to have it authentic. Then there is a little note that it may mention a floppy disk controller failure, but it doesn't have a floppy disk drive, so that doesn't matter. It is, and I think this is nice, mentioning what happens 
on a low battery shutdown, so your battery is out, then it starts to scream like a tortured goblin. And someone who hasn't yet experienced this might get worried, I certainly did, before realizing that, for instance, your charger has disconnected inadvertently or something like that. They mentioned it here explicitly, like, don't worry, just charge it again. And then a little bit about the mouse functionality that you need to enable that in the BIOS, for instance, and verify it over some menus. So these are the common ouchies. As to the user's guide, this one is decisively more serious than the previous one. Insofar as the previous one was telling you what nice DOS games you can play, and this one is actually quite full of technical details. Like it immediately starts how you can change the display ratio between 4 to 3 and 16 to 9 by pressing function and F4. Then it proceeds to tell you something about an on-screen settings menu, continues to discuss the mouse and, and the expansion ports, gives you an exact diagram of what port is where. I'll just bring this a little bit closer because I have the feeling <laughs> This is some information which one might need when operating this machine. In particular, where you are finding the parallel port. This is supposedly connected next to the USB and the PS2 and VGA and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, this is some important piece of information right there. Other than that, we're getting a little bit of, yeah, how to manage the sound, how to handle the on-screen menus, how to switch VGA output, FN plus one. Now that is going to be interesting, as well as how to use this, this keyboard mouse, which it is now having integrated. And for the, for the mouse to function, it must be enabled in the BIOS settings where it is disabled by default. I admit, <laughs> I already have enabled mine. And then it mentions the USB port seems to be working just like before. That means handled over MS-DOS and not something that you can hot swap. And finally, they are telling you exactly how to enter the BIOS. You are pressing Dell on startup. This is barely readable, I must admit, but it tells you anyway to navigate to the advanced CMOS setup and then select the mouse support and then press escape, choose save settings and exit and, and that's it. I didn't need to do that. I don't know why, but when I briefly tried out the machine, <laughs> temptation was too large. I'm sorry I cheated you, did this without you, but the mouse is working. <laughs> that much be told, but you'll see in a moment. And then finally, they are showing you that you can run QBasic, which by the way, was like the classic Microsoft Windows programming environment with, in which pupils could share programs because you didn't need to buy or install anything. It was often pre-installed. And then some common problems, missing BIOS settings, yeah, your battery is out, keyboard not functioning, press escape, that you may have sound card or parallel port issues and that you need to, you know, enable them in the BIOS and make sure there's no conflict, that there may be just a short prompt after inserting the charger about a low battery, which you can ignore. And I actually think I have seen such a thing on the book 8088 before. So it's not a novel thing, actually. And the low battery shutdown thing is once again explained. So that is regarding the hardware, which is being delivered. And now let's have a look at the system proper. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let's boot our friend. not support. Hmm. Suboptimal, right? Um, <laughs> okay, what do we do? Low battery system will be shut down. Okay, 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 I get it. 
So likely this not support thing is simply a battery warning thing. Yeah, yeah, system will be shut down. I get that. Well, then I will have to charge it a bit and see what happens, right? Take two, as they say. Our friend has been charging for some five minutes. And it is starting, in fact, <laughs> extremely swiftly. And this floppy controller failure <laughs> is barely noticeable. Yes, we're having extended memory. You know, there's this difference between expanded memory of 64 kilobytes and extended memory of the other remaining seven megabytes. Anyway, FNF4, let's try to change in DOS mode the display ratio from four to three, in which it is by default, and to 16 to nine. Can we? Yes, we can. That's interesting. I will go back to four to three though. FNF4. Ha, huh. that was also interesting. So I was not back in DOS. It was not reacting on my enter key, which means that this menu has been indeed still active, like the manual warns that if your keyboard is not active, it might be that the menu is doing something. So that was just such a case, all right? Okay, I'm not going to do anything here. I wanted to do something here and I wanted to go from 16 to nine back to four to three. Okay, if I now press enter, yeah, this thing is still there. So, you know, like after a screen change, the menu will disappear, but it will be still active and you will not be back in, in the machine. I can, I think, demonstrate it again. So I'm going to go here to 16 to nine, right? I'm going to display ratio 16 to nine pressing enter. We are back. It's showing the new screen, but it's not working yet. And if I now press enter, it will not forward the line. No, it does not. It returns me to the menu. So there you have a clear demonstration of this issue, which the manual is fairly referring to. And now that I change it again, and I'm again in this menu, <laughs> I'm pressing enter and then escape. I'll just give it one more escape for good measure. Ah, second escape wasn't even necessary. I'm back in the system. Can I get into the BIOS? Pressing on, pressing delete. Ah, no, it's gonna start DOS, yeah, no. Okay, let's try it again. Immediately pressing it. Yes, so apparently getting into the BIOS means that you immediately press delete just after you press the on off button and that without waiting for any display of whatever. And then we're having here standard CMOS setup, advanced CMOS setup. I would like to enable the mouse, please. Mouse support disabled. Let's change that into, ah, come on. Page up, page down, modify. <laughs> this is a function thing. Okay, so function up arrow enables my my mouse support. And what else are we going to be having here? Boot sequence. <laughs> okay, this is lovely. Yeah, the thing with the C drive and the A drive and the CD-ROM drive is just, just adorable. Okay, so this is done. I can now press escape to exit. And I want to have a look at the BIOS in general. Why not? Standard, standard CMOS setup. Okay, I don't really care about the date and the time, but I could set them up here. Floppy disks. Why is it set to have a floppy drif, drive A? What would happen if I set floppy drive A as not supported? Like, I mean, I can change the values, right? So not installed. Will I then even have this floppy drive error? 
Okay, then escape. Man, the rest I am not that interested in. I'll just save the settings and exit. Yes, and now let's see what happens with the floppy drive error. None. You saw it just didn't have anything. It really did disappear. But I must have activated now the mouse. And with Fn and F5, the mouse I have here on internal. Right, I have switched this already because Fn and 5 is external PS2 as is the default. And Fn and 5 again gives it internal and one more line appears that the mouse is a keyboard mouse. So that must be the procedure to actually get your mouse activated. So you enable it in the BIOS and then press Fn F5 to get to this menu and then press Fn and 5 if it is like this external PS2, then you're saying Fn5 to switch it to internal. Having done all of those things, I'll also say Fn F4 in order to put my screen into 4 to 3, please because we're going to be having a real eh, escape escape windows going on i have always loved the startup screen of windows for groups 3.11 and here we are and the mouse is not yet active windows is beautifully sharp in color it's <laughs> It's so cute to see this. This is nostalgia pure. And now let's activate the mouse though. So I'm pressing this right menu button thing. And yes, we are having indeed the mouse. So let's shift the window. I'm clicking the window and okay, it does not work. Look, I am clicking the window. So this is now depressed, it has clicked on it. But the moment I am pressing an arrow key, nothing happens. So the mouse, this, this arrow mouse, apparently can be used for clicking, but it cannot be used for dragging. So in other words, there's no drag and drop with the keyboard mouse. I briefly left Windows because I wanted to check out something at the command line. And when I then typed win again, I am getting this, which is very avant-garde. Ah, and then not support. Okay, I think I managed to somehow crash it, but I'm not sure how exactly I did this. I, I am getting not support again. So at first I thought this not support error might be thermally related. And so I let the machine cool down. Also, I took out its compact flash card, but I'm still getting not support. In other words, not support is not depending on the compact flash card. I might as well reinsert it, but it has nothing to do with it. So this error must have some sort of other source. Let let me guess what it could be. Can I get into the BIOS? Getting not support. FNF5. Okay, so this menu is working. And there we are having VGA out is on. What happens if I change that? FN and 1. Now it's off. What happens if... Hmm... If I do FNF4 to change the aspect that I show, nothing. Escape, so FNF4. Uh -uh. But the not support message went away. Okay, and now my adventure is apparently very much inhibited by not support. I'm going to turn off the entire thing. I'm going to disconnect it from the charger. And then let's, let's tell it 
to try life without the battery. So that means that all the BIOS settings which I did will be gone. Well, that is regrettable. The battery is there, but you cannot press its connector. So while the battery itself is accessible, removing it is a little bit more adventurous. Tweezers. Okay, the battery is gone. Let's try things again. That means that all my BIOS settings are now gone and I should get a fresh start. Don't you dare. Don't you dare telling me not support. Okay, the battery is out and I'm still getting not support. So it's also not related to BIOS values. The night has passed and morning has come. Welcome to the next day, ladies and gentlemen. And overnight, I let this cutie here uncharged disconnected the charger and without battery in the hope that whatever internal electrical interferences there may have built up, if any, the day be gone. And now, as I turn it on, we are having once more not support. The only comment I could tell you to that is every night in my dreams, I see you, I feel you. The thing is that it, it started wonderfully, but I have the feeling it is now the time of the iceberg. And unless some marvel happens, this is going to end up more like Jack than like Rose, right? So looking at the manual it is apparently here that i need to connect this thing and i have connected it further to my monitor so i have here a monitor which is having one million of connections one of them being vga and this monitor is now waiting I don't know yet will this work because I did not try that yet. It is waiting for a, an actual test of the external monitor. If there is any chance to, you know, maybe switch to external display just for a moment and then drive things normally, then let us at least try that because I'm having very much the suspicion that this is something coming from the screen. Okay, and to switch to the external monitor, I believe I had to do FN1. Okay, now FN1, FN1. It does not react when it is already showing the not support message. So maybe right after boot, FN1, FN1, not support. FNF5, how about here? Like that used to somehow strangely work. VGA out is off. Let's turn it to on. So VGA out is on. And we're getting not support. FN1. No. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to admit that I have been rebooting this thing like a couple dozen times since 
it began behaving like this yesterday, and it is always the same insidious result, unfortunately. The thing is beeping, and we're getting not support. And I really don't see what could I otherwise do. Like, I try to put it onto an external monitor, it does not work. I am trying to do something right after it starts. It is unwilling. I am starting it and pressing delete. I'm not getting into the BIOS. And to be very frank, I am starting to run out of options. No signal, finally. No signal should mean that the external monitor is getting the image, but it isn't. No signal, according to the manual, happens if you transfer the display over here. And we see no display. So the VGA cable is connected, the monitor is connected. Let me just recheck, is it though? Yeah, it is. So the monitor is connected to electricity. They are connected over the VGA cable, but I am still not getting an image. It is either not support or no signal, but without a display. And that lets me think that something might be amiss with the graphics card or the monitor. I actually don't suspect the computer itself in this. The weird thing is that the key combinations are working if I wanted to display this on-screen menus. So this FNF5 or what it was does appear. Like, nonetheless, it even changes options, like I turned the mouse here to internal. I can turn on, off or on the parallel cable and this sound blaster thing, this ad lib or what it was called, like anyway, the sound card. But it is unwilling to show anything on the screen, right? If I say VGA out off now, nothing happens. On now, nothing happens. And the laptop, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the morning kitchen table just around my chamber door. And its screen has all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming. And the lamplight of his screening throws its letters yeah, into my face, quoth the laptop, not support. Anyway, <laughs> this is the only thing I can say about this. Like, it's horribly disappointing. Like, woe upon me. I would have loved this gadget very clearly. But things standing as they do, it very much appears that I, as a user, can do nothing. There's nothing which I can do, cause or render, that would result in anything but not support. And I'm sparing you my numerous tries in the meantime, which resulted in nothing but this. I find that a great pity because I did find and still do that the machine is very beautiful. There's clearly a lot of effort which has gone into it. It is made sturdy. The colors are crisp, but now they are just displaying its own tombstone inscription. And I have now asked the seller for some help and advice, if any is available. And if I have omitted anything, I will, of course, make another video in all fairness and correct whatever mistake I have made, if any. But if not, then you will understand that the machine died within half a day therefore obviously as it is it cannot be recommended of course i can only hope that i have made some exceptional experience and i hope that others are not affected but certainly i also hope that 
this result will be reported to whoever is producing and designing these things so that such an error is eliminated. And with this, thank you for joining today. Thank you for watching. It's difficult to say I hope you enjoyed this video, but at least I hope you found it informative. And if you're not a subscriber yet, it would be very kind of you to consider joining this little community. Until we meet again, I wish you a wonderful time. See you soon. And from me, goodbye. Post dictum. On the flip side, I still get to enjoy the very cool black box.